Greetings, salutations, and welcome to the Krieger Cast. I'm your host, Patrick Krieger, and today I'll be taking you on a tour of Disneyland in Anaheim, California. I'll be showing you a couple of my family and I's favorite rides, as well as showing you a little bit about the penny collecting scene here at Disneyland, and be asking you Disney fanatics a couple questions I have about the park's history. To start off, Disneyland is my home park. But sadly, I don't really find the time to go there as often as I would like, nor is the cost something I can afford all the time. One of the interesting things that's going on at the park right now is they're building a new parking structure. Now, my family and I didn't find it all that much of a hassle to park, but apparently during certain times of the year, it's rather rough. Now, KriegerCast viewers have already gotten to see the world's first monorail over at Santa's Village, now you guys get to see the world's most famous monorail here at Disneyland. Sadly, I wasn't able to capture any footage of it moving. However, I was able to get a little bit of footage of one of the trains, which you'll see later in this presentation. Now, one of the things that I find rather interesting is the way that the plants at Disneyland change throughout the season. So I'll be cutting in little bits of the foliage and plant life as you see here throughout the video, introducing little things that I find interesting throughout the park. We were here in spring, so quite a few of the trees were dropping flowers throughout the park, and I thought that was rather beautiful. We did get to see Walt's Railroad up and running, which is always cool. I kept my poor family waiting here for almost, I would say, six or seven minutes trying to get this shot of the train pulling off. It was a little bit of a shame, too. I caught some decent audio, but I've decided that I wouldn't be including audio through most of this presentation to reduce the risk of a copyright flag. I've heard of a lot of YouTubers complaining that the random background music at Disneyland and Disney World is something that Disneyland really likes to protect. So, you know, far be it from me to be the one who shakes the norms and posts all that stuff. I will be including a few select snippets from a couple of the rides, such as the Jungle Cruise, the Haunted Mansion, and Star Tours. However, I will not be posting any audio from the Enchanted Tiki Room nor Pirates of the Caribbean for the obvious reasons that those particular attractions have ride songs that have turned into real songs, such as uh, It's a Small World. So I'm sure Disney would not be too happy with me posting those. And as it pertains to Star Tours, I will not be posting any of the footage of the ride because they asked us kindly not to take any video during the ride. And so I didn't do it. So now I'm taking you on a tour of Main Street, USA. And I would highly encourage you to take a little bit of time to look into the history of the shops on Main Street because there is kind of a fascinating history about how the shops have changed over the years. And I do think that Main Street deserves a little bit more love and attention. A lot of people look at it as just a place to get those last-minute souvenirs as you're walking out of the park. However, there are some fantastic restaurants, some of which I'll be showing you later. There's some great places to get coffee and snacks uh, that I'll be showing you later, as well as there is plenty of shopping to do here. And it might be a good idea if you're the type of person who doesn't know when or where to buy things, to take a look at what they have here and then see how it compares to the rest of the park so that you kind of have an idea of when and where you're going to be spending your money on souvenirs. I was kind of shocked at how the cost of certain things were far less than I thought they would be, and the cost of other things was far more than I thought they would be. But do take some time to take a look at the other attractions here on Main Street, such as the Penny Arcade and Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, an attraction I have still yet to see. We sadly, though, did not get to see any horse-drawn carriages. For some reason, they weren't running them today. And that would be a question I do have for you Disney fanatics. Do they still run the horse-drawn carriages often? Is that a thing they do at Disneyland to this day? I don't know. However, one thing I do know is that we got there before the ducks got up, and I thought that was kind of cute to get a little bit of footage of these sleeping ducks. We headed over to Star Tours, however, they were rather packed, and we were able to get a fast pass, so we decided to get some corn dogs while we waited. I was kind of shocked at the price of the corn dogs, 
but I was more shocked at the price of their premium dipping sauce. I wouldn't necessarily say the bacon ketchup was worth the additional $1.25, but it was pretty good, and I think it would be even better on fries. Now, the corn dog was a suggestion from Retin and Link over at Good Mythical Morning, saying that it was one of the best things to get at Disneyland, especially for the money. Now, <laughs> I think a $10 corn dog is a lot of money. However, it was an incredibly good corn dog. After our corn dog, the ducks had woken up, and we were able to head to Tomorrowland. Now, Tomorrowland was under a ton of construction while we were there. They had the Astro Orbiter all fenced in, as you can see. But they claim it will be up and running rather shortly, so we will have to wait and see. I did get a little bit of footage of the tips of it hanging out, as well as this kind of overbuilt-up shot to the sign welcoming you to Tomorrowland. Attached to the old People Mover track, I believe... We arrived a couple minutes early for our tour amongst the stars, so I took that time to take a little bit of footage of this People Mover track, because who knows how long Disney will keep it around. However, it seems to be integral to the Star Tours building, so I hope it will be around for a little while longer. I've heard rumors that there are stress cracks in the concrete, so they'll never be able to use it again. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do know there are ducks sleeping underneath it. I just had to catch a little bit more footage of them. And I had to get some shots of this futuristic gardening that kind of reminded me of the old Epcot Center that I used to go to as a kid, uh, where they had all the uh, plants in the hydroponics. I think that was the Wonders of Life pavilion, but I could be wrong about that. Now, this was one thing I debated about uploading in its entirety or not, and I decided that I would upload the entirety of the footage without the entirety of the audio. But I love to watch these YouTubers who do history of theme parks, and I decided since I got the footage anyway, I need to put it out there so that people know what the queue looked like during this particular era of Star Tours history. However, I will be uploading a few audio clips of some of the animatronics and things of that nature in a moment so that there's a little bit of the audio preserved for you to see and experience. So, I'll be leaving you here for a moment so you can enjoy the sights and sounds of Star Tours. <laughs> Our tourists seem to be getting an unusual reading from the binary motivator, but perhaps we should run a systems check. But I'm going to let it slide this time, because it's so cute. Just don't tell my super guy, okay? Our little secret. We are traveling to Gavin Oh my god, super cool. Oh my god, I Now, as I said before, I wasn't actually able to capture any footage of the ride because, you know, again, they asked us nicely, so I nicely didn't. However, I was able to capture some footage of some of their penny machines, and I will be showing that in a moment. However, I want to mention, these are apparently the newest machines at the park, and they're quarter machines. <laughs> They cost a dollar a piece, which I thought was a little bit ridiculous, but what are you going to do? New products cost new money. I did want to get a little bit of footage of the Tomorrowland trash can because, you know, why not trash cans? And they do have a second, but this time actual penny machine over at Buzz Lightyear's, which you will be seeing now. <laughs> Now, 
Now, they did have two such machines over at Buzz Lightyear's. One was for Tomorrowland as a whole, and one was for Buzz Lightyear individually, and they were the traditional penny-style machines, costing 50 cents to mash a one-cent penny, and I suppose you could look at the quarter machines as costing 75 cents to mash one quarter, but, you know, still, that costs a lot. Now, I heard a rumor that it was almost $475 to get all of the pennies available at Disneyland, California Adventure, and in the resorts themselves. And I think that's a rather steep price to pay for all those pennies. However, I was able to get quite a few of them, including there are almost five machines in Frontierland. I don't know why there are so many. Now, one question I have for you Disney fanatics out there is you see the wagon tracks that are all throughout Frontierland. Do those follow the route of the old wagon train ride thing? I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to know. One of my favorite features here at Disneyland, though, oddly enough, is this piece of petrified wood. It's a cool way to see actually how massive these things are without making your way all the way out to the Petrified Forest National Park. It's kind of cool that you can come to Disneyland and see these little bits of other things from throughout California as well as throughout the United States as a whole. It really is one of these welcoming places that, you know, you can do a lot in a short amount of time. And I think that was the original intent of the park. Now, of course, we have a trip to the Haunted Mansion, a must-stop for anyone going to Disneyland as far as I'm concerned. Walt Disney famously said that the ghost would take care of the inside of the mansion and that he would take care of the outside of the mansion because he didn't want a run-down building messing up his beautiful park. And I just find that kind of a funny story. One thing I also found interesting was the trash can in the waiting queue here in the French Quarter. It says, waste please, and you'll see that in a moment. And I just find it funny because it's like it's encouraging you to waste things. Well, I will be leaving you very shortly so that you can get a little bit of the spooks of the Haunted Mansion. Your cadaverous pallor betrays an aura of foreboding, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. Is this haunted room actually stretching? Or is it your imagination? Hmm? And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. (laughs) Of course, there's always my way. Any volunteers? <laughs> if you insist on lagging behind, you may not need to volunteer. And now, a carriage approaches to take you into the boundless realm of the supernatural. Take your love by the hand, please, and kindly watch you Well, after our trip to the Haunted Mansion, we got our only glimpse of Club 33, as we didn't have an invitation to visit, and we headed over to Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean is the ride that, you know, Walt kind of was working on as he was at the end of his life there, and of course that's parodied in the Rick and Morty episode. I'm sorry, of course, for bringing up Rick and Morty. But I do find it a little sacrilegious, all the changes that they've made to 
this ride over the years because of that, because it was Walt's baby as it appears. But I don't find this particular scene as uh, dismaying as other people do when it comes to changing up the uh, ride. What I find more dismaying is all the changes that they've added to make the ride fit the movie better. I'm so pleased to report that they took most of those out. However, we do have Johnny Depp here at the end of the ride. And that's a little disappointing. But you know what's not disappointing? More pennies. And sadly, some of the pennies were taken out for refurbishment, but these were available. Penny machine, sir. Well, back out into that bright daylight we headed as we were headed back to Main Street to make our lunch appointment. My mother was so kind as to get us reservations at a restaurant on Main Street that I frankly didn't even know existed. However, I must admit the food there was fantastic, and I'll be seeing that in a moment. But for some reason, I needed to show you all this little light fixture. I just thought it was cool. Look at this food. Now, this this piece of fried chicken here was one of the best pieces of fried chicken I've ever had. They claim it was Walt's favorite. I don't know if that's true, but it was amazing. And then we were off to Adventureland. Now, we went to the Enchanted Tiki Room, and I won't be showing you any of the music from the Enchanted Tiki Room, but I will be showing you this. I am Tangaroa, father of all gods and goddesses. Here in this land of enchantment, I appear before you as a mighty tree. Stand back! Oh, mystic powers, hear my call. From my limbs, let new life fall. Now, here's where I'm going to be asking you Disney fanatics for another favor. Now, I I remember being a child and going to Disney World out in Florida and getting a pin that claimed to have feathers from the birds that were in the Enchanted Tiki Room. And I just need you guys to fact check me here. I've Googled it a few times and wasn't able to find it. That doesn't mean it's not out there. Now, it just means that I wasn't able to find it readily. And so I'm wondering if you guys remember that, the the artifact pins that Disney used to do. Now, it was really cool. We were able to just walk into the Enchanted Tiki Room. While it seemed to have full seating, there wasn't a line. Once one show was done, you were able to just walk into the next show. And the birds seemed all in really good shape. However, some of the flowers, their little tongues didn't move, but hey... You know, it's still a a hoot and a holler, as they say, to visit the Enchanted Tiki Room. I just think there's something kind of, you know, fun and 1950s sort of Polynesia about it, which, of course, that's what it is. I guess it's more 1960s, but, you know, hey, neither here nor there. We did get to try out the new Tropical Hideaway dining area and try out their new takes on the Dole Whip. Now... I heard on good authority that the food here is fantastic, but I did not get to verify that as we just came from lunch, and I only wanted the Dole Whip. Now, one of the things that I thought was pretty interesting is they had Dole Whip with raspberry and Dole Whip with orange. Now, I have to admit something. I've never actually had a Dole Whip. But after hearing all these YouTubers talk about how fantastic Dole Whip is, I had to give it a try. And I tried the Dole Whip pineapple with orange, and it was fantastic. Now, this is the coolest penny machine in the park. It's over at the bazaar across from the Jungle Cruise. And watch this baby in action. It's rather funny, that little guy there seems to scare people, 
But now I take you on a jungle cruise. It looks like they've all got their trunks on today. Fun fact about elephants, folks. They've been known to grow up to four feet, where most humans can only grow up to two. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at that. I can't believe this. I tried to get the boat, folks. This is an African bull elephant now. You can tell by his huge ears and ginormous tusks. He is actually the second most feared animal in our jungle. On the right side of the boat. Oh, no, folks, it's the most feared animal in the jungle. It's his mother-in-law. Wow, he looks dead. Tired. This is Disneyland. Dead tired. That's what I meant. That's how zebras sleep, I promise. On their sides, necks at awkward angles, surrounded by drooling lions. Yeah. <laughs> we better let him rest in pieces. Everyone say hi to my friend, Dina. Hi, Dina. Oh, but all seriousness aside, the locals have put out some art to welcome you. I believe they call that a sculpture. Oh wow, we've got a celebration going on up here at the village. Let me see if I can translate. Ricochet! Ricochet! Spear noise. Best sound effects ever. The moment you've been waiting for. It's the eighth wonder of the world. The amazing. Say it with me, folks. It's the backside of Wonder! I've never quite gotten that joke, but as you can see, the Jungle Cruise is a very punny ride and is a ton of fun. Every uh, captain has their own way of telling the story and making their own jokes, and it's definitely worth a ride each and every time you go there because you never know what you're going to get. Next, we went to dinner at the Blue Bayou. Now, this had been a dream of mine since childhood. I had always been on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride and seen that restaurant and wonder what it was like to dine there. And I do have to say, unfortunately, the experience did not meet my expectations. And I'll get to that in a moment. However, I did think the menu was rather cool, and I thought it was particularly cool because this is a very dark restaurant, and it had a built-in light. Now, I know that's pretty typical with a lot of restaurants, but I still thought it was cool. Now, what disappointed me slightly was not the bread nor the drinks, both of which were fantastic, but was the, uh, the lobster tail as well as the sides that I got. Now, I got the surf and turf that had the filet mignon, the lobster tail, uh, potatoes au gratin, and a little bit of vegetables. The vegetables were green beans and zucchini, and they were great. The uh, potatoes au gratin was oddly spicy, but good. The lobster tail was very ho-hum, and that was disappointing. However, the filet mignon was amazing. So I think the lesson was learned here. Uh, get a steak, get their gumbo, which I do have to say their gumbo was fantastic. I did not have it this trip, but I've had it in previous trips, and mm, their gumbo is amazing. Another thing that was a little bit disappointing, however, though, was the creme brulee. The creme brulee was just good, not fantastic, but, you know, hey, what you gonna do? Um, the topping was good, the berries were fresh, and it was clearly well made. It just wasn't the most flavorful creme brulee I've ever had. It was, however, one of my friend's birthdays, and they did serve her a little chocolate Mickey Mouse, and that little chocolate Mickey Mouse was absolutely fantastic. So again, it does seem like they make things fantastic, but you have to pick and choose what you're getting there. So stick steak and stick chocolate, and you'll be golden. Now, we did get to catch a couple of the parades, and I'm showing a little bit of footage here. I found the parades a little too loud for my liking, but that's just me. I love getting to watch the chocolates being made at the candy store on Main Street. And I hear their handmade candy canes around Christmas time are the best in the world. So if you get a chance, you should get one, though I hear there's a rather long line. Now, if you're a longtime listener of the Krieger cast, you know that I love coffee. And you know what I love more than coffee? Starbucks coffee. And they had a Starbucks here in Disneyland, which I found rather shocking. And it had the old Starbucks logo. Now, they told me it's because they have a special agreement with 
uh, Starbucks. Like, it's only this Starbucks and the Starbucks in Seattle that uses the original logo, and it's kind of cool to get see it being used. They also have their own custom cups, and they're fairly priced. They're not much more than they would be normally anywhere else. And they had this little Starbucks plate that I tried desperately to buy. However, they were not selling it. Now, one thing I wanted to see here today is the most expensive object that you can buy at Disneyland. And it's right in there. In the glass cutters right on Main Street is this replica of Sleeping Beauty's castle that is in Swarovski crystal. And it's apparently $35,000 plus. So, wow. I also found this little hidden gem here, a taxidermist on Main Street. It's just kind of funny to me. Well, anyway, thank you very much for joining me today on my little tour of Disneyland. I hope you got to experience some things you've never experienced before and enjoyed your stay with me. If you enjoyed this, I have a couple more tours of a couple more theme parks up on my channel, as well as I have some interviews both with veterans and uh, with people in different professions. So I hope you uh, take a chance to listen to those. And if you feel I deserved it, give me a like and consider subscribing. Until next time, dear listener, see you out there.